What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the 2025 Honda Civic. This one is a sport, finished in urban gray. MSRP is $27,800. Let's take a look at what is powering the little Honda Civic. Super nice little economy car without really breaking the bank. So if we find the hood latch, which is kind of down there, we can pop this open and you're gonna find Honda's two liter inline four cylinder engine. This has 151 horsepower and 133 pound feet of torque. This is front wheel drive with a CVT transmission and you can expect 31 miles per gallon in the city with 39 out on the highway. If we take a look at some of the styling, I like the headlights. They're nice and sunken into the bodywork, kind of got a darker housing to them. And then you have this gray plastic throughout them as well as the upper grille. Got your Honda badge up here, lots of openings to provide cooling to the engine components. And I like the sporty diffuser up front. This nice splitter looks pretty good. And the front bumper itself kind of looks like a Type R. Honestly, they've styled this really well. It looks really sporty. You can see smooth body lines throughout the front, sharp lines on that hood. And this color looks really, really good. Definitely a nice spec. At the side, you're gonna get a nice set of 18 inch wheels finished in the gloss black with a multi-spoke look. Nice sharp body lines throughout the front fender, prominent body line throughout the whole side profile and then a nice design down below. Okay, your gloss black mirror caps, along with body colored door handles, and then black trim throughout all the windows. So this is the sedan. You are able to get this in a hatchback. So you're gonna see the cool rear window looks pretty nice on it. Really good profile overall, nice side proportions. Tail lights have some LEDs and some generic bulbs in here as well. Nice red design with sport. You got the Honda and Civic badge, and then some good lines throughout the rear bumper. Just got a little bit of plastic, and then a nice body color diffuser in the center with your exhaust tip over there. So can't complain, nice looking little car. Pressing the button here, we can manually pop that open and you got a pretty good amount of storage space in the trunk. Pretty wide in here as well. And you're even gonna see all your changing kits for the spare tire. You can also pull these. It's gonna unlock the rear seats and then just manually go in here, grab the headrest and you're gonna see how much extra space you get. They fold down nearly flat. They got a decent opening into that trunk itself. So it's actually a pretty practical car when using it for cargo, not too bad. The interior finished off in black. You just have some plastic and vinyls and fabrics on the rear door panel, nothing really all too fancy. And then pulling the seats up, you are gonna see this vinyl material on the edges. Nice little design touch for it. And then in the center, it's actually all vinyl. You do have this center piece you can pull down with cup holders and an armrest. And that's about it for all the amenities. So simple car as expected. Now at 5'11", I sit here really well. I have plenty of leg room and knee room, headroom as well. And the seats themselves have a good recline and a very padded base. So for an inexpensive car, honestly, it's a pretty good four seater. Person in the middle might be decently comfortable, but can't complain with the back seat. Wouldn't mind air vents, but nonetheless, not too bad for the price point. Moving on to the front seats, you do get similar materials, just the hard plastics, a little bit more fabric in it, all of your controls for the windows, grab handle, trunk release button as well, and just all manual controls. I do like the front seat, so you got the vinyl, the contrast stitching, nice bolsters, cool stripe throughout the center. So not a bad looking seat. And then hopping inside, got a pretty sporty three spoke steering wheel with contrast stitching in gloss black. Firing it up now. You do get some paddle shifters, controls on the left for audio, Bluetooth. You can also see the home screen for the center. You have cruise control settings, lane keeping, forward collision, all that good stuff. And then you can see the windshield wipers on the right, turn signals and headlights over on the left. For the gauge cluster, you can scroll on this left screen, see all sorts of different information. So I like how you got a pretty decent amount of information you can see. Continuing down, you do have to hit the home icon every time. So I have to hit home, go back here, scroll wherever I want, hit okay. So a little bit of work to do it, but nonetheless, for a simple car, not too bad. On the left side, we have traction control, interior dimming, one of your air vents, and then just some soft touch plastic throughout this dash. I love the silver mesh for all the air vents. It just looks really cool. And then for the infotainment screen, this one is super simple. Just have our menu. You can touch a few different items with touchscreen, go into your radio, some simple things like that. In the reverse, you're gonna see a backup camera with different guidelines along with different views as well. And then climate controls are really simple down here with physical buttons. We have all the dials, zones, AC, plugs down below with extra storage, and then a cool texture throughout the center. 
There are drive modes in this car as well. You have a sport normal as well as an eco mode. And then we have the auto start stop and brake hold. Fabric on this padded armrest, decent amount of space with a removable tray. And then a nice small glove box. One last look at the interior. For a sub 30 grand car, I mean, it's pretty inexpensive to buy this. Not bad, decently appointed and you got about what you would expect and it's pretty roomy. Grab handles up above, simple dome lights and just a basic manual mirror. All right, so setting off now in the Honda Civic, it's probably been almost 10 years since I've driven one. One of our first ever YouTube videos was actually a Civic. That one got like a million views back when I was in college. So crazy to see Full Circle filming another Honda Civic. It's been a while. In this, you know, it's definitely not a fast car, giving it some throttle. I mean, certainly no speed beam in here. However, there are other Honda Civic trims that you can get that have turbos and more powerful engines. So of course, the Civic in general, this is an economy car. This is basic transportation, basically. Now we're just in the normal drive mode, getting my bearings with it. It is comfortable actually at my height and everything. I'm sitting here with a lot of room. The seats have a lot of good padding to them. So it's a nice place to be. And I've even slid the seat a little bit farther back and pulled the steering wheel back. You have all sorts of different movements with this as well. And at 5'11", I am sitting really well and my legs are nice and stretched out. There's other basic economy cars that are similar size to this where my knees are just cramped and I don't like it at all. So this is really pleasant. I could do a road trip in this, no big deal. So while it's not the fastest thing out there, you're gonna get pretty decent MPG. Visibility is all really good. Mirror, definitely on the basic side, a little hard to get into the right spot. It feels a little flimsy up here, but it is really easy to see around. So good normal car. You know, if you're looking for basic transportation, the Civic is kind of the definition of that. This will get the job done from point A to point B, and you still have enough creature comforts, the roominess, the comfortability aspects to it, to where it's a nice place to be. I like the leather on the steering wheel, the shifter feels nice. And while you just have a lot of fabric in here, the armrests are still pretty comfortable and pretty padded. Getting up to some speed again. Yeah, you definitely wanna be careful if you're gonna be pulling out into high speed traffic. That will be the one drawback with a slow car. So obviously, personally, I'm not a fan of that, but you know, the general person, this will be a fine car just getting you from point A to point B. It still gets up to speed, just you might have to ring it out every now and then. The steering feels pretty good, nicely weighted to where it's not heavy, but it's heavy enough to give you some feedback and feel like you're driving, you know, a nice quality car. Very simple on the infotainment, so you just have your basic Bluetooth basically, but nonetheless, it's a simple interior. It does look good. I love the physical climate controls, good storage solutions and everything. And the road quality is pretty good. The suspension's absorbing bumps well. I'm hearing a little bit of tire noise and road noise, but this is a kind of a bumpy road in general. No wind noise or anything like that. So generally speaking, it's a pretty quiet car, pretty comfortable to be in. And you know, if you're looking to just rack miles up, have something very economical, very affordable, and super dependable, you know, this is probably one of the better choices as far as a compact sedan. I think this is better than quite a lot of the other cars. I think the Corolla is probably the best other alternative, but I think everything else is probably a step below. So driving dynamics, not bad, just kind of what you would expect, but very roomy for being a small car that I didn't expect. And being it is so small, you have a very good little footprint, tight turning circle. Backup camera does a great job. I like all the views too. Gives you a pretty good look at everything. And we can do that without uh, barely touching the gravel. But driving the new Civic, definitely a nice little car.